Hello. In this episode, we'll discuss von Willebrand disease. Describe the genetics and epidemiology of von Willebrand disease. It is the most common inherited bleeding disorder due to autosomal dominant deficiency of von Willebrand factor. Describe the pathophysiology of von Willebrand disease. First, the functions of von Willebrand factor. They include platelet adhesion to subendothelial collagen by means of glucoprotein 1b, thus initiating platelet aggregation. And the other function is the carrier and protector of factor 8. Remember, the source of von Willebrand factor is either megakaryocytes or the viable pallidi granules of the endothelial cells. Second, describe the three different subtypes of von Willebrand disease. Type 1 includes mild to moderate deficiency, type 2 is qualitative defect, and type 3 is absence of functional von Willebrand factors. Remember, type 3 is autosomal recessive, contrary to the most common mode of inheritance seen in the types 1 and 2, which is autosomal dominant. So if you are asked if a patient has absence of functional von Willebrand factor, the mode of inheritance is autosomal recessive. That's an exception to the rule that we always know for one Wilbrand to be mediated autosomal dominant fashion. What are the clinical findings in a case of von Wilbrand disease? Remember, because of the impaired function of platelet aggregation, as well as possible deficiency or functional impairment of the factor 8, we could have any type of bleeding. And by any type, I mean either factor type deficiency or platelet type bleeding. So the type of bleeding is not necessarily helpful as much as knowing that the bleeding is usually mild, it initiates a childhood, could be mucosal, could be after dental procedures. And most important factors that help argue in favor of the diagnosis of von Willebrand disease is one, presence of family history, and two, bleeding that worsens or manifests with use of aspirin or other NSAIDs. In regard to diagnosis, what are the initial bleeding work up in von Willebrand disease? We have the abnormality indicative of platelet dysfunction and that's incre increased bleeding time. However, because the abnormal platelet aggregation is not due to uh, thrombocytopenia, the platelet count is normal. On the other side, we have the abnormality secondary to decreased function of factor 8, and that is prolongation of activated partial thromboplastin time of the intrinsic uh, pathway. However, the measure index of the extrinsic pathway, the prothrombin time, is normal. These are the first tests. What are the confirmatory tests for von Willebrand disease? Well, we mentioned that von Willebrand could have three types, and the types include either qualitative defect or quantitative defect, and therefore we need to perform the confirmatory tests that detect the type. To be more precise, we have a von Willebrand factor activity test, and we have a von Willebrand factor level. What are these tests? For the von Willebrand function assessment, we use Ristocetin cofactor assay that evaluates the ability of von Willebrand factors in patients' plasma to aggregate platelets. For quantitative measurement, we use von Willebrand factor antigen level. You remember type 1 and 3 are quantitative defects. The type 3 is complete absence and is autosomal recessive while type 2 is qualitative dysfunction. Now, we mentioned PTT is usually increased and platelet count is usually normal. However, remember there are also possibility that platelet count be low and uh, PTT may be normal, not necessarily increased. So once more, if we have normal levels of von Willebrand factor antigen, what type of von Willebrand disease we are dealing with? We are dealing with the qualitative type or type to the dysfunction. On the other side, if we have von Willebrand activity that's impaired, both Ristocetin cofactor assay as well as the von Willebrand antigen levels will be abnormal because if you have low levels, the function would necessarily also be impaired. And so we distinguish them 
based on the levels of von Willebrand factor antigen. The first best test is the Ristocetin cofactor assay. If the antigen level is normal, it's type 2. If the antigen level is mild to moderately decreased, it is type 1. If the antigen level is severely low, that's type 3. Based on what we have discussed so far, what is the recommended treatment for type 1 von Willebrand disease? That is desmopressin. Now, why we do not use desmopressin in type 2 or 3? In type 2, we do not want further release because we have enough quantity. It's a qualitative defect in type 2, while the function of desmopressin is just to initiate and facilitate further release of von Willebrand factor from endothelium. In type 3, there is almost zero production of von Willebrand factor, so we cannot facilitate it. That's why desmopressin is only used for type 1 von Willebrand disease, also known as mild to moderate von Willebrand disease. So what is the treatment for the type 2 or type 3? Remember, cryoprecipitate that has enough factor 8, or we can provide fresh frozen plasma. Also, factor 8 on von, von Willebrand factor itself, including factor 8 concentrate or recombinant von Willebrand factor. In addition to the types 2 and 3, what are the other indications for use of mm, cryoprecipitate or factor 8 and von Willebrand factor concentrate? Uh, if the patient in type 1 does not respond to von Willebrand uh, treatment with desmopressin, or if the patient has major bleeding or surgeries. And finally, how we should educate the patients in regard to preventing bleeding in von Willebrand disease. Patients should not take NSAIDs and other platelet uh, inhibitor medications. If a woman with von Willebrand disease has menorrhagia, how do we manage that? With OCPs. And the final question of this episode is why it's possible for factor 8 levels to be normal in the course of von Willebrand disease. There are at least three possible explanations. One is the fact that in mild form, the type 1 disease, there may be adequate levels for protecting factor 8. Second is both von Willebrand factor and factor 8 are also acute phase reactants and they could be elevated in inflammatory or other stressor conditions. And finally, conditions that increase estrogen or thyroid hormones can increase the levels of von Willebrand factor including pregnancy, OCP use, and hyperthyroid patients. These patients may have masked von Willebrand disease. Okay, this finishes our discussion of von Willebrand disease.